Welcome back, Wildcats. whoop de doo the Last time I saw you was 2018. That was last year. Man, it's been so long. Gosh, diddly darn. That's a, a long time no see, Jackson. To be honest, I didn't think that we'd still be here doing this here podcast. Yeah, my resolution was actually to never see you again, Finn. <laughs> 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 Me too. Uh -huh. I never want to see myself again, okay? After my relationship with Big Santa Boy, I never look the same. Every time I look at myself through my, my broken mirror, because I'm poor, I see a shattered man just like the shattered mirror that stands before me. I just, I just want once for somebody to love and give me a small fragment of the intention where I could actually live with myself and be something in this pointless world. You know what that sounds like, bud? That sounds like a personal problem, okay? <laughs> now, let's be professional, okay? Um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, Micah's coming at us with the worst New Year revolutions. I can tell we're off to a great start, but no matter how good that segment may be, we gotta keep moving. On to Jack. He's going to break down why your New Year's resolution is bound to crash and burn. Jackson, do you have any resolutions that have already died? Uh, well, every day, uh, New Year, uh, me and my family go out to the woods and we become a death cult for the night and worship the higher being of the universe. Tiki taka wooka waka laka wup lippity hick hick slack poo. Uh, so, yeah, basically dead, I guess. What about you? Well, mine just pales in comparison. I, I usually sit in my house alone, eating toast. Mm. Burnt toast, no butter. Mm, but no, no, no butter. No butter. No. Next is Julia, giving you a quick, right out of the toaster, a hot and special taste, uh, just for you, if New Year's resolutions are actually helpful. I don't know about you, Jason, but my New Year's re res resolution was to break pencils right after I sharpened them. Oh, wow. How'd that work out for you? I got a lot more uses out of my sharpener. Yeah. The thing practically paid for itself. You know, gotta say, I think they're pretty helpful. Yeah, well, we'll have to see what Julia says about that uh, later. Legitness, my bro Sidon. Up next is Adrian, excreting out sound to you flim flabbing wackadoodles about the traditions of the new year. Let's get some Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Baked bread. Guys. It's toast. But, like, scientific. Let's get this podcast started. Go right ahead, Micah. 2018 is out and in with a new year, Wildcats. We are one year away from 2020. That's one-fifth of a century, believe it or not. The 22nd century, in fact. But enough sidetracking. We're not here to count the coming years, but to recount the national and international traditions of New Year's folks. This is Micah James of Seed Up Today, and I'm bringing you five strange New Year's traditions. Number five, talking animals. Also known as whispering animals, or whatever synonym you have for talking, this is a tradition in Romania and Belgium, involving animals to no one's surprise. On New Year's Eve, it is believed that the animals gain the ability to speak. So on that day, farmers try to hear their animals speak. Ironically, it's considered bad luck to decipher what the animals are saying. Of course, that is, if you hear them. I would be more concerned if you could somehow hear them. Number four, furniture throwing. I know I'm probably gonna butcher the names of these places, so I'm just gonna give that disclaimer now. But during New Year's Day, residents of Johannesburg, South Africa, take home renovation to a whole new level. Upon New Year's Day, People take their old furniture and toss it out the window to symbolize a new beginning by getting rid of the clutter. It's like a much more extreme and metaphorical version of replacing furniture, only oh, this method may or may not leave you with a broken window. Number 3. Polar Bear Plunge Another name that I enjoy saying belongs to our third tradition in the list. Polar Bear Plunge has quite a long history in Canada the United Kingdom, and the Netherlands, where despite the frigid temperatures of the winter season, people enter a body of water such as a beach or a lake. 
Unfortunately, despite the very inviting name, there are no polar bears involved in this event in any way, shape, or form, as far as I know at least. Number 2, Frozen Frolican. This one is very similar to the polar bear point. It comes from Russia and involves a group of people called the Cryophil Swimming Club, aka Polar Bear Swimming Club, believe it or not, in Kransnoyarsk, Russia, where they bathe in the Yenisei River upon New Year's Day in the freezing to below freezing temperatures. I know people enjoy taking cold baths, but traditions sometimes like to take things to the extreme. Number one, swinging fireballs. And lastly, we have swinging fireballs. This one just sounds mesmerizing to be able to watch. Swinging fireballs is a Scottish New Year's tradition dating all the way back to the Vikings. This tradition is a symbol of purification as men parading through Stonehaven swing large balls of fire through the village. Wow, that, that was fun. Felt like, felt like I was some narrator in charge of a history documentary that I would actually find interesting. Well, Wallcast, that was five strange New Year's traditions. You would be surprised at how many times I've said Christmas traditions instead of New Year's. What was your favorite tradition in this list? Of course, mine would have to be the Swinging Fireballs tradition. Be sure to stay tuned for our next show, Wildcast. This has been Micah of Seed of the Day, and I'll see you next time. Congratulations on speaking. That is such a huge milestone. Man, it brings a tear to my eyes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, next up is Jackie Boy. Uh, do your thing. Most New Year's resolutions involve trying to be healthier, or getting out of debt, or breaking weird habits. However, those resolutions are not going to last very long. Studies show that about 80% of people fail to stick to their New Year's resolutions for longer than 6 weeks, about until the second week of February. It was a good effort, guys. A study from 2016 published in Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin, a scientific journal, investigating New Year's resolutions and found that 55% of resolutions were health related, such as exercising more or eating healthier. About 20% were to do with getting out of debt. These are tricky things to do, especially after the holidays. Studies also show that importance and enjoyment are significant factors in whether people stick to resolutions. The enjoyment one is the only one that actually matters though. In other words, if the participants were getting immediate rewards for their new habits, they would be more likely to stick to them. There's also one little word that keeps us from doing our resolutions. A word often associated with guilt, shame, and an absence of decision. The word should. It's all involved in the internal battle with yourself on whether you want to stick to a resolution or should stick to it. Whether you think you should eat a salad for dinner or should work overtime tonight. Just don't overthink it. You might actually go through with it. Also try to stay away from non-committal words, saying you will or you should. It's just giving yourself an excuse for something you know you don't want to do. If none of that works, don't stress about it. There's always next year. Jack, yeah, you really hacked them awesome facts. Yeah. Oh, it was New Year's Day and Jack knew what to say, yeah, it's gonna be okay, really man, it's gonna be okay, you're gonna get through, I know you'll have your strong, and I believe in you, I know Karen left you, but she doesn't deserve you, Jack, now pick your little self up, go to the gym, and get jacked. I couldn't have said it better myself. Up next is Julia, take it away. We all have different ways of celebrating New Year's. For example, this year, I fell asleep before midnight while my family screamed to country and musical songs to karaoke. But something many of us join in on is New Year's resolutions. New Year, new me, am I right? But it doesn't make sense. They almost never do anything, just because Earth passed a point at which we decide it determines the new year, and because suddenly that means we can better ourselves as individuals, it doesn't make sense. It just makes you depressed. Because then you were so motivated and you got all into it, and you're like, oh yeah, we're gonna get that self-improvement, my guys. But then you don't. It's sad. 
And then when you get depressed, you gotta get a therapist. And what does that mean? Money. You know what that means? You got no money. So it should be more like, new year poor me. Especially if you get all extra and buy that gym equipment saying that you'll use it and lose 10 pounds, but then you gain 10 pounds because you eat your emotions. My conclusion? Don't make New Year's resolutions because they'll only make you sad. Instead, I offer you making goals that are completely unrelated to the New Year and that don't have a 200 step program to go with them. That's how you cheat the system. Because then if you fail, it's just a big, oh well, we might try that again sometime, I guess, maybe, but at least I didn't, you know, disappoint myself. Anyway. That's just my thought. This is Julia Porter, and now let's get back to the show. I know my resolution was useful. How about you, Jackson? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I can't really say more, much more than that, or I'd, I, I'd have to keep you hostage. Oh, understandable. Yeah. Okay. Coming at you next is the man, the myth. He's straight out of the storm drain. It is Adrian. Hello, my name is Adrian, and today we'll be discussing uh, what other countries and cultures do f on New Year's. We'll get to the other countries in a second, but for now, let's talk about America. Well, as everybody knows who lives in America, we have one huge giant ball that drops at midnight on December 31st in New York, and after that, things get crazy. People will People just flip out and fireworks start to pop left and right. Well, in other countries, it's pretty much the same thing, uh, except the fireworks are 10 times more extravagant than in America, especially in Rio, Brazil, New Zealand, uh, our neighbors up north in Canada, uh, but Fireworks over there and those other countries, even in, in China too, I can't believe I forgot them. In China, whew, there's a lot of fireworks is, because you know, that's when, that's where fireworks originated from. Anyways, I'm not here to bore you with logic about fireworks and stuff, but in other countries, uh, they do crazy traditions. They have like a lot of weird things going on in other countries. Over here, we just pop fireworks. Over in Denmark, they smash plates on your front doorstep for good luck. And in other countries, in Brazil, there's a tradition where you eat this one dish and it gives you good luck, apparently. Uh, we're not we're not that special. We just have a big ball that drops at the end of uh, at the start of the new the new year. But in Romania, it's getting wild over there. Everybody's dressing up in crazy bear costumes to chase away evil spirits. I don't know much about Romania, but just hearing that makes me want to go go over there and check it out. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But some things over here might seem weird over there to them, so... Thanks for tuning in. Till next time, I'm Adrian. Absolutely spectacular. I didn't know people actually cared that much about a segment in time where they'd waste their time celebrating something made up by humans. <laughs> humans, am I right? <laughs> Crazy, man. All right, now I want all of you to finish those resolutions you started off making, all right? You can't just give up now. You gotta finish it, man. Don't stop, break those pencils and kill those deers, man. Okay? Now I believe in you. Yeah, I believe in you, man. Why oh freaking you? Now, thanks for listening to our first podcast of the year 2019. Woo. We'll see you homie, homo sapiens next time. This has been a Jackson Reed. And Finn Lions Let's. And this is 212 today. today. I look forward to seeing our next meeting. We'll see you then. Yeah, bye. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>